How's it going YouTube? And today I have a teardown video of a Landis and Gear AXS4 smart meter. Well, this is not a smart uh, chipped meter yet. This here is the base model without any of the um, integrated networks built into it yet. This is what it looks like on the front. This side, as you can see, it's badly sun faded. Uh, these meters here, I have a bunch of these. Uh, they were bought in wholesale for refurbishment purposes, but a lot of them uh, don't work. Now this meter here is a Form 16S, so it's a socket based uh, A, B, and C, and then you have your neutral down there. This meter was built in May of 1996. It is still made today. Um, back in its day, I'll show you some of the competitors. It's not a super light meter, but it's not a heavy uh, built one either. As you can see on the outside, just has some bad sun fading. And then, this was the ABB meter at the time. This was a competitor of this when these were built. So around the sides, a little bit smaller. The ABB one is a little bit smaller. And it has a back of it that's made out of like a big light material instead of the kind of like fibrous plastic. And these meters are still made today. Here is a model that is 10 years older. Has the gray cover. And this one here is severely sun faded too. As you can see, it's just, you can see defective. So, yep, and then comparing these meters today against um, the Honeywell, because Honeywell uh, bought out Elster. So, the mirrors, they haven't changed much in design over the past 20-some uh, years. These meters have just basically stayed the same. I'll quick compare it to a... Uh, Slumberger meter from Texas. As you can see, the sun fading hasn't really affected this one as it does these uh, Landis and Gear meters. I don't know if it's like cheap plastic that they use, but this meter was left uh, outside in the service on a transformer setup, so it's been exposed to sun. And these meters, of course, come in different flavors. Here is a Form 8S, 9S meter on the back. You can see all your potentials and KYZ hookups. This one was made in 1997. It looks the same on the front. This here is a smart uh, equipped meter, so it has all the communications in it. But back to the main one. Let me just open it up and show you what's inside. Now these meters are not uh, poorly made. They're really nicely made. The only reason why I don't really stock these meters in my business is uh, they used to be made by Siemens and it was uh, when they were involved in the Holocaust and kind of like a social reason. But without the cover, uh, it has the black uh, frame to take it apart. This bends up and hooks in as so. The current transformer is unplugged down here. This flips up like a lid, and then you have blue, orange, 
yellow and gray. I'll get back to the uh, front plate in a minute. Inside you can see you have some heavy, I don't know what, if that's steel plated copper or what, it might just be basic steel, yeah it's probably just steel judging by the prongs that have been uh, pulled apart on the back. And you have your current transformers all through them, A, B, and C. And these are the leads that go to the control board. And these are your voltage potential lines. This is probably, yes, this is definitely neutral. So get that out of the way. Get back to the main part, the face. This here, I believe, is a generic one. Um, the single phase uh, one that is on the side of my house has the same uh, face as this, except it's in gray. And on the back you can see some nice big capacitors, you have one down there too. Transformer, I don't know if the transformers, uh, what went wrong with this meter, but as you can see, it's not looking too happy in there with the uh, peeling up and it looks like something's oozing out of it there. There's your nice microprocessor, some uh, covering, there's probably some chips in there. And you have a heat sink right here. screw bit Here comes the board, and this is some actually pretty cool engineering here. If you can see all the contacts there, because the LCD sits right down in here. Just remove this cover. It's kind of in this weird assembly. There's its bracket to align it up. You can see the, uh, you can barely even see it, but there's a whole bunch of contacts right on the back. You have your buttons here. And then your optical port LEDs. Pretty good quality. And the casing here just looks like an injection mold piece. There's the buttons that are on the front. And because people complain about smart meters causing fires, I'll just show a cons comparison between a digital one and an analog meter. Let me just... My apologies, the S, or the camera on my memory, but here I have an S40DS San, San Gamo uh, polyphase analog meter here with the demand. So it kind of has the same basic features as this one, minus the, able, the ability to connect wirelessly and all that fun stuff. But as you can see here on these smart meters, let me clear all this out of the way, you have your bus bars and they're directly uh, part of the prongs here. It's kind of how they're molded. So there's no weld points that can go wrong and get hot and catch fire. As you can see, they're actually a little bit bigger than the ones on the analog polyphase meter. You can see the current transformer there and you're not going to be able to see this well through the glass 
trying to get it right here, but you'll, you cannot see, but they have a tack weld where they welded the copper to the steel prong on the back of the meter, and that's a weak point, and when you get a little bit too much current going through there, that's going to heat up and cause a fire. If it's all one piece, there's really no way for it to heat up without any kind of welding. It'll just get hot overall. But this here will build up hot spots because there's weld points. That's basically it for a digital meter made by Landis and Gear. And I'll catch you in the next video.